Now, the time has come for springs. Springs are tricky. There's a lot of parameters to consider. There's a lot that you have to get just right. And for my application, I need lots of springs. And assuming I could find a spring that's just right, available for purchase off the shelf or online, the fact that I need so many of them turns it into a fairly high cost part of the sculpture. So it seems clear to me that what I've got to do is learn how to make them myself. So I've gone and done some investigation and it looks doable. The ideal material for making springs is music wire. It makes sense. For a musical instrument such as a piano or a guitar, you want a metal that vibrates nicely. So I got a few different wire sizes, and the first one I started with is a thickness of 14 thousandths of an inch. And I've had some success. Made a few springs here, check it out. They weren't too difficult to make. Uh, this really is a cheap way to do it. So if I can figure out how to mass produce these, I think I'm going to be in good shape. The way that I made these springs was by taking a rod, checking it up in the hand drill, then taking care to use gloves so as not to cut myself. This can get a little squirrely. Take a piece of wire, unspool it, cut it off, thread the end of the wire through with a bend, then apply tension with the glove, start twisting. Now comes the scary part, letting go and the resulting spring back. This thing is going to whip around, so I think I'll just cover it with my glove and sort of let it release. And there we have it. Let's pull it off and see what we've got. Not bad. Nice and springy. I can stretch it out and deform it. And now the spacing is increased. So I think I've got the basic recipe here. So I went and contemplated these springs, thinking about the size, the spacing, the thickness of the wire, and how to attach them at the ends. I can bend hooks on the ends, I can pull up a few coils, and then it occurred to me, you know, having this with just the precise spacing, the manufacture, ah, uh, you know, I'm gonna make a one or two hundred of these things, maybe there's a better way. And I came up with this, this idea that I think was great and could be great, except it has one fatal flaw for this particular sculpture. But I'll show you the idea anyways. Here it is. Just a simple arch, or what you might call a bow spring. So this would be super simple to fabricate. You just snip off a length of wire, and it has all the right properties. It can be compressed or extended, and it springs back and forth. So. I was pretty excited about this vision and all along thinking that it was going to work out, but I've come to the conclusion that there's just not enough space to pull this off. If I was to attach it between any pair of pivoting rods, and if I was to give it adequate extension range, then I'd have something about this size here. So when the rods want to go and extend, it's got to be about this long. But when they want to go and compress, the leaf spring gets jammed up with the lattice. It doesn't have enough space. This is thanks to the restriction that the sculpture can't stand out too far from the wall. In a different venue with more space off the wall, this type of thing might be perfect. So I think the bow springs is going to have to wait for another sculpture. I'm just going to have to find the right coil spring and the right technique for fabricating them. Okay, so I've experimented with three different wire sizes. The super thin, about 1 64th of an inch. The intermediate, about 1 32nd of an inch. And the thicker, this is about 1 16th of an inch thickness. And this guy is super stiff. That was a challenge even to get it to wind around the dowel in the drill. The intermediate feels nicer, but still not loose enough to give the real lively freedom that I'm looking for. So I think what shows the most promise is this looser winding, maybe three quarters of an inch winding diameter of the thin wire, the 1 64th wire. So what I've come up with for attaching the springs is to drill a thin diameter hole on the underside of the cap and double the wire over like so to give it a little bit of a burr and just insert it into the hole like so.
Okay. So I got it inserted on one of the pucks, and then again on the other. Okay. So there's a pair. I'll make another pair. Here we go. All right, let's see how they look on the sculpture. Whoa. Insert one on the front and the other on the back. So we got a pair of rods and a pair of springs. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Wow. So I think I've got something here. The action of the pivoting is working beautifully. There's a nice low level of friction. And it's also clear that each of these rods wants to stay parallel. So if I move one up, the other wants to go up. If I move it down, the other wants to go down with it. So they sort of follow each other around. And this is something that I didn't totally foresee. I was imagining only influence along the direction of the spring. But these guys influence each other perpendicular to the spring and in any direction. So one of the reasons I chose this triangular lattice to begin with was thinking that because there's more connections, the wave is going to be more omnidirectional. But looking at this now, it occurs to me maybe I could have gotten away with a square lattice. They have this, this nice leader-follower relationship. But I guess I'm already locked into the triangular lattice. So now I've got to fabricate a whole bunch of these springs. And to make it happen, I've built a special device. The friction spool. The friction spool has a special purpose. Its job is to rotate with a uniform amount of drag. To spool out music wire gradually with a more or less uniform amount of tension so that it can be taken up without running out of wire to form an effectively endless spring. The idea here is uniformity. Because it can spool out a long length of wire and regulate the tension while it does it, hopefully this can produce batches of springs that are highly uniform. Here's how it goes together. The shaft receives a pair of plates. That inserts into the plane bearing here. Then the split bearing, or the friction bearing, on the front side here uh, goes together with pieces of felt and the felt rides along the surface of contact. Each piece has slits cut into it. They insert like so from the bottom and the heads are locked in place with these hexagonal mortises. Take the felt and lay it in there nicely. The spindle resting on it and then sandwich, top layer of felt and the top part of the friction bearing. Make sure the felt is laying down cleanly there. And then to clamp it all together, pair of washers, pair of springs, nice stiff springs. I can't even get these to close all the way with, with my own grip strength. Another pair of washers and the wing nuts. Spins nice and easy. You can gradually crank these guys down and it's gonna clamp this split bearing together forcing the felt down around the shaft. And now there's a nice bit of turning resistance here. You can clamp it down even more. And thanks to the springs sort of absorbing the force as the shaft rotates, more of a range of friction um, can be achieved that way. You get a nice variable amount. Next, let's get some wire on it. Set the friction spool to my desired friction for this first test. Yeah, that feels about right. 
I'll get it started with a few passes and I'll insert it. All right, here goes nothing. Uh, maybe a little more tension. It seems to be working. Getting a nice uniform coil developing here. Taking care to keep my face away. Just in case the wire snaps. I could see myself going on like this for miles. All right. Now, I'd like to cut it. I guess I'll protect it with a gloved hand and snip. Hey, not bad. Looks like it wants to loosen some more. Oh, there it goes. Woo! Oh, yeah. Look at that spring. How uniform, how regular. Wow, I'm super happy with how this turned out. I can now produce endless springs. Here's the first one. Oh, it's quite slinky-like. Look at that. That's something special there. All right, I think this is doable. I think I can create as many springs as I'd like.